Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Pixel Pushers Podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm, I'm Brian. I always forget who's who. Um, today we have a, a special guest we're going to be talking to on Zoom. He is a filmmaker. He's been a filmmaker for independent films uh, since like 96, 96, 97, somewhere around there. Um, he is a cinematographer. He's an editor. He does special effects work. He's also been doing some remastering, which we usually get around to talking about. He does some picture taking. Yeah, photographer, artist, great artist too. Yes. Can draw really well. Um, and I don't know. I thought the conversation was pretty good. Yeah. Yep. So if you're into independent filmmaking or just uh, getting into it, uh, you're a beginner. Go ahead and check it out. Um, I found it very interesting. Or if you're just interested in his story. Yeah, we'll be checking out some of uh, the movie trailers and. Um, we were talking about um, uh, budgets. I mean, these are you know thirty to hundred thousand dollar or more films too, like full cast, full crew. We talk about remastering some movies from an uh, old film, and then we talk about like stuff like you know is Kickstarter really a way to like you know finance a film? So let's um, let's get to it. Okay. Let's start with that. Where did where did the name come from? I mean, you've been using it. It's on your IMDb uh, page. Oh yeah. Okay. So so wheat is a short. It's a truncated version of buckwheat, and buckwheat is a combination of my last name Buckley, and uh, and a misinterpretation of that, which would be uh, uh, who is the mis. It was in Ohio. It was uh, Jeff Shaw. He, he, he's the one that donned me uh, buckwheat. So that 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 started. I remember out. when that was a thing too. Yeah, that was that was a while ago. That was what yeah. eight? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I never had a nickname, so I just rolled with it. And so you went on to. Um, I mean, so that's like that's your IMDb page. That's your. Um, you know, I go by Shafe, short for Shafer. Yeah, uh, that's I've always known you as Shafe. And, uh, you know, I went to Oregon. People were like, you have a, I, I'd have roommates at times and I get mail. It said Brian Schaefer. And they were like, what? Who is this? <laughs> like, and I kind of kept it a secret, you know, like, no, I love yeah, it. Yeah. Name, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's uh, a lot of people that don't, don't know, you know, I mean, and, and, and then the Buckley part now is just evident on Facebook because they require it, a last name. So you have been, I mean, going back, yeah, photographer doing dark, dark room stuff. I mean, dark room stuff is kind of a dying breed at this point. Yeah. Um, I did yeah. photography, like, and, and I started that. Well, I guess I had it. I, I was doing it in Dayton, but I wasn't doing dark room photography, like developing my own film until I had started taking a class in, um, in Chicago, I'd already moved to Chicago and I was, I was failing in my, my degree, uh, my computer science degree. So I just started taking classes like photography and, um, you know, theater makeup classes and just like whatever art, artsy classes. Right. So, Where were you going? Um, just curiosity around here. Where were you going? For this uh, I, I had a, there was a year I had at, um, uh, what was it? University of Dayton, and then there was wow. there was many years. I started off as a summer, and then probably about two or two more years over at Sinclair. So, okay. yeah, I liked Sinclair I, a lot, actually. I oh, actually, it's so much cooler now. By the way, I mean they got oh, it is. They stuff. have a lot of really cool stuff, yeah. and, and I actually still do darkroom uh, stuff. I I haven't in a couple of years, but I still have an enlarger in my bathroom. Memphis. It seems like you've done a lot of stuff in Memphis. Yeah. Okay. So I, I actually moved to Memphis. Uh, really? Okay. In uh, eighty, or not eighty, ninety. Uh, well, I went to. I, I worked on a movie there called The Sore Losers in ninety seven, end of ninety seven, 
And, and then I ended up moving there, I think in 98 or 99, I was there, I think until 2001, maybe. And the sore sore losers, I just love the premise of this, all the trailer. Um, (laughs) I mean, what the aliens from space come to earth to kill the hippies. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I mean, it's a yeah. pretty simple silly <laughs> premise. Yeah, they actually just, uh, they just, we, we just, I say we because I was part of it, but um, it's not really my movie. It's my friend Mike's. Um, he's the one that kind of is the ringleader in all the Memphis stuff. But uh, he just released an HD version of it last year. And I, I was helping doing the effects because we had to redo all the effects because oh, all, wow. all the effects were done in, um, you know, standard definition. Yeah. And I think that's the trailer I saw. So you had to like actually go back, remaster the whole thing. What, yeah. What, yeah. What Cause that? otherwise, you know, up it from the crappy SD uh, master that we had just wouldn't have looked good. I, I don't think it would have. So that's, I mean, okay. So uh, tell me, t- talk about the difference between um, the how you did the effects and that. Because I mean, there's like, there's like this like weird kiss of uh, um, uh, the amusement park kiss movie where there's beams coming out of eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. And um, oh, the, you mean the guitar wolf? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, how, so what did you do different? I mean, how did you change those effects? I mean, how did you do them? Oh, well, initially, I- how did you do them later? Yeah, well, I mean, the, we we tried to uh, treat it just like, you know, just working with the original material. So, you know, it, we just tried to make it look as, as, as similar as possible. The only thing that really got changed, uh, and this was a director's note, uh, um, and that would be the flying saucer at the very beginning was changed so it looked more like a like a 50s hot rod with the engine block coming out of the top sort of like a big daddy roth type uh um cartoon so so yeah i don't know if you saw yeah in that trailer the 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 flying saucer is just basically a a dome i love that (laughs) yeah a a spinning okay the, yeah, I remember uh, watching that part. The um, whole thing. I won't, I won't have oh, okay. You're talking about that kiss. Um, right. No, I'm going to have to actually... No, I was talking about Kiss the Band. Kiss the Band. Phantom yeah. of the Amusement Park, I think. There's like a scene in here where there's like beams coming out of the eye, uh, eyeballs. And I feel like I, that's the same thing that happened in Phantom of the Amusement Park. Um, I'm going to have to cut that off because uh, there are some nudity and I don't think we can put that up. So... Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. right. In, in, <laughs> in the trailer, yeah. yeah. So um, I might have to go back and just make sure we didn't get that in there. Um, so that's your tie to Memphis. And um, you were just talking about um, uh, John McCarthy. Um, it's yeah. actually on my list here. You've worked with him a lot. So, so yeah, but I guess back th- then, he's been always known as JMM. And, like, he actually started off doing comic books. He's actually gotten back into comic books now. But um, uh, but now he's just Mike McCarthy. So, oh, you God, if, you got, if you got back into comic books, you should get back into making movies. Comic book movies are what's happening. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the reason partly he's doing comics is like you know, m- movies are expensive, and he's just trying to get, you know, just trying to get someone to back him. I mean, he's still yeah. he he has a handful of scripts that uh, he's been working on. He's got some people that are kind of looking out for him trying to push it uh but uh i don't no, know i mean it no, still no, no, might that's... happen still something might happen but it's if it, it's not going to be like some you know ten thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar movie this will if we're going to do a movie or if he does another movie it's probably going to be at least over a hundred thousand that actually was the very next thing i was going to ask you about some of the budgets um you know, I'm trying to make a short film. I think I got about a hundred bucks into it. And, uh, yeah. and so like, what, what is like the budgets of like some of these? Um, yeah. The more, I can tell you, like, I, I can tell you like, um, well, it's interesting with sore losers. I mean, that was probably about 30,000, but that was shot on all fit on film, 16 film. 
Oh, neat. And you have to, then you have to do, you know, uh, processing. Processing, and then they did a, 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 a not just a one light transfer, you know, but they did a um, they went scene by scene to to correct the the you know the levels and stuff. And this is during the first transfer. So I think they did a one light on the on the on the recent HD version. Was that cool. digitally? Was so that was converted into digital yeah, what does so, one light mean can you clarify that yeah okay so the one light is just like they they set it to a optimal level and then they just let it let the projector capture whatever it can get okay. so if something goes overblown or or underblown actually it, will, it, it won't go over or under actually there's an automated the, the capture system is somewhat automated so, like, if it gets too hot, it'll, it'll compensate. It'll correct it, correct. yeah. Yeah. So. So, kind of like a quick edit. So, yeah. Like, I mean, it's not ideal, like, especially, like, like this movie I'm working on, 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 on the HD version of JMM's uh, 1990 movie, or 92 movie, uh, which was shot in Super 8. And that one has, you know, we got a lot of footage that was transferred that, came out terrible because you know we have had very dark noirish scenes and then you introduce like a a flame all of a sudden but then the the, the one light machine responds to that and then the exposure is totally you know different now oh, wow. it's all of a sudden yeah. that it gets dark you know yeah. because it, it sees the flame mm -hmm. so the um you're talking about going back and um kind of remastering some of these old things that um because yeah i i kind of i, I kind of <laughs> i don't know the, the one i'm working on now is probably my favorite film of his that i've uh that he's done and this is before i even met him but oh, no. to me it's it, it's it's more grounded in reality and it's it's just that overall a, a better movie on I think uh, narratively. Yeah, so, yeah. but I mean, it's not as fantastic. Although there are some pretty fantastical parts on it as well. It's, it's out there. So, but okay. So, uh, prices of other movies. Let's see here. I go go for the most um, like the Rocky Mountain Fast Guy movie. That's kind of recent. That one, yeah, that wasn't too much. That was probably about thirty grand, I'd say. But half of the movie. A half of the price of that would be studio time because he was doing he was recording the songs to get the, the main character right um he's the, the director as well and he he was do, working on the songs about a year beforehand and he's he does it at a studio a buddy of his but you know he's still paying out out of pocket and it probably probably was about 10 grand in uh studio time uh, and over those years we got some pictures that I stole from your Facebook here. <laughs> yeah. So some of those, okay, that, okay, that's Rocky Mountain Fast Guy. The previous one was from a different movie. Okay, um, I wasn't sure what was what. Yeah, yeah, that one we never even used that scene. Oh, now wow. that looks Don't like you love that, yeah. that looks like is that you there? <laughs> yeah, because now there's drones that do that. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, but to put all that work into it and then not use the scene. <laughs> yeah, How many times have we done that? Yeah. And there you guys are. Um, yeah, it was in Orlando there. Orlando Film Festival. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, and he, I mean, so he is. Let's well, let's talk about that movie a little bit because that's definitely on the list. Um, he's actually a real musician. Yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. So John, John, actually, I, I, I met him when he was looking for a DP, the director of photography for for this movie and he didn't know anything he didn't know squat about filmmaking he was a, a musician that lost part of his hearing so um i'll get to that later but um so uh, a friend of his who was also involved in who was actually the the, the initial director he uh I, I met up with them and uh that's you know that's how i, I met with John the first time was just him looking for a uh, for for a photographer uh, on the movie. Two times hot. Now a lot 
lot of folks out here like to call this the easy life. But nobody told Guy Montaigne easy was going to be this hard. If you weren't playing in them bars every night... Y'all just don't get that I'm trying to do something with my music, do you? An American story of adventure. Living on borrowed time that can't be paid back. <laughs> what do you think, just because I got a guitar, I'm going to Nashville? So what's in Nashville? A lot of high hopes and broken dreams, that's what. Dude, we're heading that way, you want to ride? So what are you? Some kind of outlaw in the run or something? I mean, if you're in trouble, it's Wanted. Probably can't use your own name, right? When are you gonna tell me what you're in for? I'm telling you, man, you ain't gonna believe it. Man, I've heard everything. I sure as hell didn't do what they think I did. I've never believed in fate or destiny. I've always felt that life was just a series of random choices. Some good, some bad. Most people spend their whole life wandering around this big old world just dreaming. A shotgun ride along road trip journey through desperate times and desperate faces. And to be the best at losing is the only way to win. Boys mind telling me where the hell the fire is? If you knew what I've been through to get here, standing in front of you right now, I know you'd want to hear what I got. I drive a truck on a trouble. Everywhere I go Pollen disaster Yeah, king of the road The man The music The movie Rocky Mountain Fast Guy yeah, I don't so know. I'm just laughing because I'm laughing like, because the movie's a funny movie. I mean, it really is. Yeah, I, I, uh, um, we were we were laughing a little bit about the the orange jumpsuit. I was just telling them that down in Nashville they still wear the stripes, and we were wondering how on earth did you get the cop. How do you get the cop car? Is that like a real cop, cop in a cop? prison scene? I and mean, the prison? How do you how do you get those locations? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the cop car. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the location that was. Was, that was totally mint was the actual jail, the prison. Uh -huh. And that was in uh, Sarasota. We just had a, a woman that was, um, I think she she worked for, for the film commission or she was friends of the film commission in, in Sarasota. So that was, yeah, total. I think we're the last people to use that place because I, 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 they're not doing it anymore. But like letting people, or at least low budget films, come in. Is it an active? Is is an active prison? They had to remove people out of that prison for us to shoot in that prison. That oh, area. So, wow. like you do, so is it just a matter of knowing someone, or is it a matter of asking? Do you have to pay them? I'm. I'm just, um, I think it was a little bit of both, and okay. just dumb luck. No, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like I say, now they're not doing it. And then the exterior, there's an exterior prison section, which that was in Bradenton. Um, that play that. That was, uh, I think that was a prison, but it wasn't being used. That, but it, it was soon going to be. So oh, we got wow. to use that. We had a few hours to use that, although I was in the hospital. So, but I had all, actually all my friends that I, I had like four friends shoot on that because they only had three hours to shoot that whole outdoor prison scene. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. That's not much. So, no, so we, we did we actually, do a lot of planning. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of people involved. So in the that, cop so. car just came along with that then? The okay. Year. So the cop, no, the cop car, we didn't have a cop car. So that, but, but there's, um, what, what car is that? It, it's a, a friend of mine actually owns the same car that they use for the cop cars down in, oh, cool. in okay. Sarasota. So we just had some decals made. Yeah. And oh, cool. um, okay. placed it on there. And then a friend of ours has, he's a prop guy that does a lot of props for big movies and he also does lighting. So he had uh, the light bar that you oh, put on top nice. of it. Oh, yeah. So we just mounted fun. that on top of the car. Yeah. And then we just had a uniform and had some guy. Actually, that we had two cops. Yeah. So one was the neighbor of 
the director, and then the other, the 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 smoke, the the pot smoking cop. He's like a, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, he's he. <laughs> He he's a singer for this band called Atheist, who is like a proto death metal band. Oh, awesome! That's awesome. He gets to play a pot and smoking cop. Be- <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was intended like long before we even shot. So yeah. That's too good. That's just... so ironic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you just can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah, he it's made, totally like, looks like a cop. He's kind yeah. of a dick too. I'm like, you know? yeah. did, they, did, did he just get pulled over one day and say, "Hey, will you be in my film?" Which is something I would do because I would. John, just... John did do a lot of that. I think. Uh, let me see here. I do. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think he. he uh, who did he do that with? It might have been for some of the crowd scenes or, or, or you know, where we had multi, multiple people. You had a lot of extras yeah. in there. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we I think we had a lot, uh, a lot of people he asked, ran into for the diner scene. Mm-hmm. Um, although a lot of friends were in that one, too. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. ask you that, too. Where are you getting your talent? I, I do, do you have to pay people or do you pay some people and then you get lucky with friends? Yeah, so... Yeah, there was there was a couple that were SAG actors. So there's a there's a contract you can get for independent filmmakers, and it's like um, I think it's SAG AFTRA is the contract. I, I don't even remember. I didn't do all the paperwork for this stuff. Again, John's John was doing that, and um, so I think uh, it's like a three hundred dollar a day is the the, is the, the unit minimum, rate the minimum yeah but i yeah. think we might have been able to get away with cheaper than that but we just mark it at the the going rate so because they wanted to work on it so who 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 is it i think uh the, oh the dj in the in the strip club so that, that he was a he was probably the biggest name he was the guy from the op was it the office or the oh O face guy, I don't know. I never saw the office, so okay. um, it's been way too long, since yeah. I've yeah. And then I think uh, uh, guy's mother was SAG, and because she does a lot of commercials too, I know there was probably one or two others, so but there's like a thousand things I can branch off on to now, but just like talk about locations and whatnot, yeah. The um, where were the you didn't go to Mexico, did you? To shoot some of the Mexicans? Mexicans? No. Okay. No, no. They're so, everywhere in Florida, right? Yeah. It was all it was all in Florida. So fortunately there's like a um uh what would you call it? Like um a quarry. There's a quarry. So that was sort of like the 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 bleak area where the guy the drug deals were taking place like in the in the montage with the, the small movie panels like yeah, yeah 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 so that was so it kind of looked like it was out in the desert so that was that was in a quarry oh cool. in, Sar- in sarasota yeah and then and then there was a lot of like just kind of barren farmland roads and then i just stuck some mountains in the background oh cool. um, okay digitally okay. yeah so and then the, the big the main shot when he crosses the the border where it says Mexico it's in the trailer yeah um, that that was actually stock footage and I just put him in right. there oh yeah. and just put okay, the reactions okay. in there that, breaking up again awesome. you know like uh, I noticed in the credits there on there you got Ben Sound and FreeSound.org two places we go quite often yes, <laughs> and, and heavily on um, we actually yeah. pay a place too and i just thought that was really cool like that just shows like yeah i like, actually have quite a large sound collection that i've just collected over the years of my there. my own sounds and, and of sound like cds and stuff we wanted to do uh, that we thought about making a, a collection of sounds uh, to sell but oh man we're just too busy you're credited as editing visual effects cinematography and co-producer of us that's a lot of that's a lot of hats to wear right yeah i, I okay so yeah the co-producing credit was like a last minute thing at the end because i spent so much time I, I was i was no longer being paid to shoot this movie because we were 
I, I'm, we're already on year six and year seven in making this movie. And I was like, you know, we were good friends. And it was just like, I, I care just as much about making this movie right as, as well as it could be. It went on for how long? He said seven years. Seven years. We That's great because everybody yeah, looks the same through it. Like, yeah, how, you know, yeah, like, right. yeah. 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 I don't no, feel bad about how long my little thing is taking my little 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. And, and, and it was, we're fortunate that the story kind of, uh, uh, kind of, you, you meet up at different places and, you know, you meet people and then you forget about them. So, you, you know, so when you shoot it, we can shoot that whole scene out with a certain character and then we're done with them. We don't have to and you know, you had chase a, them down three years later. Except you had a huge actor. cast on that, so, too. I mean, yeah. the cast on that was crazy. I know. I know. It was all John putting that together. So, my Lord. I mean, that's been a big problem is finding people. Yeah. But yeah. Geez. Yeah. Every, everybody says, oh, yeah, sure. And then the, you get them to really commit. Every so little harder. section of that movie has like a whole different cast, a whole ensemble, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, I is, mean, it would be it would be like months. It, it, it could be like months before we would shoot the next scene or the next whatever, you know, because, you know, he's got a regular job. You know, I was right. doing yes. whatever I was doing. And actually, I was in the hospital half the time. So I was hiring. I had to rely on uh, camera operators that I worked with before that I could trust. Well, what happened to you? So so I had kidney failure like in. Um, in 20, well, it was diagnosed in 2011, but then 2013, I was completely hospitalized for probably about three months. And then, um, and we were still in the middle of shooting. Hold, hold on. Um, okay. So just back on locations, uh, big dicks. Is that, <laughs> is that a, a real, real place? <laughs> I mean, it's cracking me up. You got shirts that said "I heart." Yeah, we had a quick conversation <laughs> about that beforehand. I'm like, if it's real, we're going. Okay, it's, right, right. Okay, <laughs> so that yeah, that that was just a place where. Uh, um. Well, I mean, the interior was is is in the interior is in Sarasota, and actually, when he exits the building it's the same building um it, it's actually no longer i think the well no it's still there but there was a fire there since we shot there um but there is a is small that a real exterior. business called big dicks though no that no okay, so okay that, so that, that, yeah. was, that was another stock footage you're probably talking about the exterior yeah yeah the place yeah. we just we think yeah. it's that a real there's business an exterior, that... yeah there's an exterior shot where i put a sign on top oh. of the building <laughs> So, and then we just made some shirts called Big Dick. Yeah. Oh, cute, I was just, cute, cute, cute. I was yeah. hoping it was going to be a real place. I was, I was, yeah, let's get, let's honeymoon. <laughs> I bet you there is a place. I oh, bet sure you there, there is. is. And, but you know, I bet cool. you they didn't even think of that when they named it that, too. By the way, yeah. there's going to be that kind of, that kind of hash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, no, there was perfect. a lot of, there was a lot of, um, uh, like digital magic we had to do you know just to, to kind of make it seem like it was as many places as it was um you know like some of the cars we forgot we didn't have license plates or we forgot to put a license plate you know from like a certain place so we had to digitally put some in some we actually had a printout of yeah, oh, wow, I was gonna wow. say you probably make them in the uh, in the computer and print them out and paste them on there, which is the paper. Yeah, yeah. That's so one we, cute. That's when cute. we remember to do that, we did do. That. <laughs> you yeah, yes. that's one thing you don't. Um, with what we do with the business view, you don't get to do that kind of fun stuff often. Uh, no, sometimes we sometimes we had a client. We, we had a drone shot that lifted and went past their sign and showed the skyline, and their new sign hadn't come in. And we just guessed what their new sign would look like totally and digitally guessed. replaced it as it went up. Right. And it looked perfect. Looked it was just as dirty as the old sign. And they were like, but how the, did you know that it's what our new sign is supposed to look like? We just like. happened to guess what the new sign yeah. looked like. We happened to uh, wow. design it. But we don't, we don't get to do a lot of that fun stuff. Right, though, yeah. you know? I don't know. That was kind of hell because that was a Well, design. because you sent it to me and you got this shiny sign as the drone rises up. And I'm like, it's not dirty enough. And we had to, we had to put dirty, some so. dirt on it. I had to put, I do, I'm a very, very good at Photoshop. So we so, uh, we had to Photoshop it and make it real dirty. And I want to go back to, um, 
like some of the budgets on these films because this is something that was brought up in the Eight Bit Heroes uh, movie that you were a documentary that you're part of, and they were talking I, 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 about. Oh, by the before you go on, I was only I, I only helped shoot a couple. I know minor minor shots, very little. And the only reason I bring it up is because there's a big part of that that was about um, the funding for the video game they were talking about. So let's talk about like funding movies with a Kickstarter model. And we're seeing more and more of that. I mean, how do you yeah. feel about, do you think that's like, I, I feel like if I something up. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I've seen, I've seen some, I mean, some movies can make it and some, some don't, but I think it, it helps if you have, a built-in audience, either built-in audience, so like Eight Bit Heroes in a way does, because there's there's you know retro game fans or Nintendo fans, so they probably would have paid for the movie and the video games. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 and that's what you get, I think, um, or at least now when you buy the package. Um, uh, it's a hit or miss model, is what I how, kind of. Yeah, how, yeah. Well, I, um, I mean, I guess I've seen I've seen some science fiction. I think that's the other thing. It's if it's just like a, a standard drama, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be hard to to really sell it. But I think if you have like a like a fantasy or if it's like science fiction, like a genre type pick, that right, right. that again, that's you know, there's there's fans for that type of film. So I think you, you're gonna have have more success. Um, there's an interesting raising um, capital for that kind of movie. There's but an like, interesting. Go yeah. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. There's an interesting thing. I'll probably cut this out anyways. Um, is uh, there's you know uh, uh, CBS used to let all the Star Trek fans make fan movies, and just there's no to do about it. There's you go look. There's all these series with like real ugly looking Captain Kirks, and you know. <laughs> Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And the Klingons look just kind of too sweaty. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so there's a there's a production studio, and they raised I don't know how many millions of dollars. It was like 1.2 million dollars, and they put out a trailer. They got some of the original cast members to be in it as a fan film. And suddenly CBS uh, said, "Whoa, hold on! This looks better than this crap we're putting out." Um, we're going to make some rolls on fan films and it was a lawsuit that went on forever. It's terrible. And um, they could not do their full feature length movie you know, with a budget, you know, of over a million oh, wow. dollars. Yeah. They, and they weren't allowed to call it Star Trek anything. Like, they would always allow you to call it that. And, like, suddenly that fan fiction just stopped. And, oh. and you know, because, you know, the guy's it looks better than this crap we're putting out. I mean, we. Well, what if they? What if they're? <laughs> what if they're not selling it though? If they're just making it to be. Just that was how much are the people getting paid to do it? Um, I don't know. I mean, the lawsuit went on for a long time, and it really. It was an interesting crowdfunding movie project to happen. And they had a lot of weird variables like, wow, we have like some people who worked on the original series who worked on battle, like the most recent Battlestar Galactica. We have some of the original actors and we built some massive sets and they were like, hell no, you're not going to do it. Um, speaking of which, um, what uh, do you got any like really like fun, funny on set stories or maybe even near disasters? I mean, how, many times, how many times have you almost died on set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was one one event that, that immediately jumped in here was uh well actually what it didn't happen to me. It was on Sore Losers, there was another sound guy that was that we, we would alternate. And he was on top of a, uh, I don't know, like an awning beneath a, a, an entry of a door of a old schoolhouse that was already rotting away. Right. And uh, as as he was doing sound, it, it started to collapse. You know, fortunately, it was only one story or you know one story high, so he kind of like fell and rolled with it. So um, it could have been could have been a lot worse. So, but 
so it was fine. Okay, um, so the, like something that I just put on my computer and people are talking about, um, talking about like uh, you've done a little bit of 3D work, 2D work, you're talking about digitally replacing things. Is Unreal Engine, have you heard anything about this whole thing with Unreal Engine being used yeah. for virtual video sets? Yeah. I, 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 I think I think we all need, need to get, learn it. I already downloaded it. I haven't even like exactly turn, same turned here. it on. Same here. Yeah. I opened it once and said, Jesus, this is hard. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand it. I'm like, uh, no, I don't want anything to do with it. But yeah, I mean, this, I mean, they make it, it sounds like they, they provide you with a pretty good amount of like sets to work. Yeah. With. Like virtual uh, sets. A lot of them are free or at least yeah. cheap to get and you just plug them in. And some of the stuff I've seen is amazing. And I'm like, all right, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting old. I'm <laughs> like, oh, yeah, God, well, it's, yeah it's going to be the future, you know, for sure. Um, at least for, you know, certain kinds of films. Well, um, I've seen just regular desert footage and water, and I'm, I think it's uh, gonna change low budget filmmaking. Like, yeah. not even talking about special effects, but just locations, creating like just normal locations. I think. Yeah, I think so. I'm very intimidated by it. And I'm kind of a tech guy, so <laughs> like, I'm like, whoa! And I even wrote a first person shooter video game, and I'm like, I don't know about this. So right. Cigarette Girl, I think, is um, the last thing I want to talk about. Um, because it took me forever to actually see it. And then we'll, we'll let you plug yourself after that. Um, oh, wait. Improv. This is going to look weird. I'll edit it without Sarah here. Improv versus scripted on some of the movies that you've done. Um, is it all just scripted? Are people improving? Like, what, what, do you, what do you sing the most of here? And what works? What do you see that works the best, or does, does it vary? I think it depends on the on the actor. It depends on the the director. I'm not a director, so I mean, I'm probably not the one to ask about this. But from what I could tell, I you know some actors are are good at improv, and they have good ideas, you know. But um, some some directors want the you know everything that's written on the page to be all that's spoken um so i don't i don't really have an opinion i think i think it depends on the film that you're trying to make um, how about um how about the uh rock mountain fast guy were there um do you was that like give me a percentage scripted versus improv on that one um you had well, first first guy. off first off i should yeah i should mention um before we days maybe a week or days before we go to actually shoot like a major scene uh usually we would meet up with the actors and go through the scene uh it, as a group we do a read through and then um you know it's to find out if what was natural for them to say a certain certain thing a certain way and also you know once you see that at least for us because you know john was figuring this out and especially after um after the first guy left, which was about halfway through. So John had to learn a lot. Um, that's where I kind of helped him on some things. But um, we, we would just, we would edit the scripts, you know, with the people, find out just like the flow and then what was re redundant. Cause sometimes, you know, you, you have an actor's say stuff to get to the next, part of the scene but you, sometimes it's unnecessary sometimes it's, um, it's not what you would say in real life but you're just trying to like get well or you might say now. it but it's just not not elegant you know yeah you're, you're trying to be you know um a, lo a little more compressed you know you want to get to a certain thing faster or you just don't want it to like take take forever so you you, you uh economize the the what's being said um so yeah so but yeah when we got to set i think there was probably uh, maybe 15 percent that was improv oh wow yeah uh, that's high yeah. i mean you know with the humor in that 
like some of that just couldn't seem like it was written because it, it was funny. There was like some. Yeah, I'm sure funny. like most I would say most of the jokes were kind of written out as it was supposed to be said. But, you know, stuff in between could be improv. Right. Yeah, kind of like some of the I can't remember the actors names, but some of the early Saturday Night Live, the 70s, they would go all off script and it was hilarious. Right. And we, right. you know, I don't know about you. I'm curious too uh, about visuals that are off script. I mean, do you ever just get to the location and you see something <laughs> that you're like, oh, I got to, this has to be part of this. You know, how often does that happen? Yeah. Yeah. There's, Especially being there's, a photographer and being visual. Yeah. There is that. Um, and then, or, 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 or someone just has a good idea, but then you're like, well, how do we do that? And then you, you have to reformulate. Yeah. That can be expensive. Um, so, <laughs> So yeah, I would say the one I, I think of right away was probably the very first day, or I guess not the very first day, but the very first scene that we shot, which was the the house that Guy and the mother lived at. Yeah. And um, so there's that scene where uh, Guy runs upstairs to to beat the the dipshit's ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So. So there was a shot where dipshits coming down, down the stairs, but um, and we were originally. Uh, I I think we had, we originally were going to have a static shot, but in, but then later on we for some reason now I'm not remembering, the shot was on the stairs and then we pull back because we have to pull back so the guy can. Um, run past the camera but it was in such a weird spot because you can't put a, a dolly there so i had a dolly on the side with a with a with the arm sticking out above the stairwell and then i had i didn't have all the hardware to make it work but i kind of made it work with some <laughs> You know, bubble gum and, and <laughs> DIY. It's a DIY yeah. thing. Well, yeah, yeah, this is what we're good then, at because of our upbringing. Yeah, yeah. For being, yeah, poor, being so. poor makes you so good. So, at that. But I, I, I would say, even though it turned out, it worked out. Um, that same moment, uh, um, John, the, the director and the actor, he was having like some heart palpitations or something. He had to like sit down and take a 10 because it was already like hour 16 or whatever and oh, yeah, yeah. you know it was a long day and it was hot as hell in there because we had to keep turning the ac because it was just at a derelict house and um, oh. oh and you gotta worry about sound so you gotta turn all that off oh yeah, and so sweat, that, so. yeah yeah exactly so that's fun time um that, that's that's interesting um yeah. so what do you do when you're not doing films and video um, trying Stuff to learn. Like ten I'm trying to learn tennis. <laughs> what is tennis? tennis? Really? Yeah. What, what would it's, make uh, you get? What would make you interested in that at this? At this, I assume you're our age. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a little older than you guys. Yeah, a couple years. I'm you're just age. Well, early seventies, yeah. late sixties. You're just yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. What would make you get into that? So yeah, I know it's not something I would have ever thought I would get into, and I'm not even. I don't even know how the, what the rules are of tennis yet. Yeah, but yeah. he's like hitting thing with a big paddle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, it's I'm actually still, I'm still learning how to hit the ball. It's actually very so. detailed. Yeah, <laughs> very detailed. But like, so I'm on. I'm still on dialysis. I, I will be probably until you know until I get a, a an artificial kidney. So um, so there's there's limited types of like physical activities that I can get involved with. But tennis is one, you oh, know, it's okay. like, and it's socially distanced and, you know. Yes, it is. You're right. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and like one of my hacks for, you know, I, as, as being on dialysis is I, uh, is, you know, I sweat. I, I, cause normally, you know, you have basically two liters of water that you have after you get off of dialysis to two days later. So that's all I can get to drink. But if I can like sweat it out, you know, I can get in a couple more drinks, which is nice. Oh, so, wow. so I, I do, you know, I, I do a lot of walking and, you know, I do, you know, the tennis and I do yoga. So 
I'm going to try to run through some of this kind of quick. Um, your website, um, you go under other various contract work here. I mean, you have done some stuff, uh, Nickelodeon commercials. TNT. TNT. Well, Comedy Central. Uh, I mean, and the roles are varied. Comedy Central, um, ABC, ESPN. Um, those were, yeah, lots, a lot of those are one-offs. And, like, most of the jobs I get are through other people that know me. So, right. A lot of those that you mentioned, I was either in Chicago or, or Memphis at the time. So somebody was like, oh, we need someone to help, you know, build the, these, uh, these, these, these buildings that are going to get demolished, you know, for the Nickelodeon set. So that only happened once and I never met anyone from Nickelodeon. So it was just like, just do this job and then, you know, they'll take it from there or, you know, someone else shot it yeah but still well, i mean you were still part of the production right, that's too, yeah. yeah you know i know um you remember dumpy um yeah 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 a good friend of his that i met up in portland um he just kind of somehow ended up with uh i don't remember if it was alexa or a, a red i don't remember what it was a very expensive camera and, you know and now he's just you he, well not now but at the time he was just like showing up and shooting Portlandia episodes, you know, for a certain rate a day. And, really? Wow. Yeah, and that's all. He's just like, yeah, I just take it home to my crappy house with all my roommates mm -hmm. because I can't <laughs> afford a house because I spend it on the stupid camera. And I got to give them my these really expensive SD cards. Like, I wait to get paid to get more SD cards. So, <laughs> yeah. um, right. and so net, net zero there. Yeah, and um, so I guess, um, you know, there's a lot of union stuff involved in that kind of thing. What would you suggest to someone like who's just getting into like you know, wanting to do filmmaking, doing short films? Like, where do you even start with that for someone? First off, it's so it, now is such a perfect time. Um, you know, any any camera. I mean, everyone has a camera in their pocket. You know, especially like those iPhone cameras. From what I understand. I mean, okay. they, look, they are. They look good. Even the they even the good. crummy Android and a five dollar. Yeah, I mean, a really, five dollar I mean, little teeny bopper microphone that I bought as a kit for a selfie thing was a that microphone was amazing. <laughs> Some of those uh, are better than what we take. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So I I don't see there's there's no reason at least not to just go and shoot and and don't feel precious about it. Just just do it and you know. I mean, since you're shooting on video, most people are now. I mean, just do it again. You know, if it sucks, do it again. Or you know, so I, the barrier yeah, of entry is kind of low. I think. I, I think you know? pe people are so precious. And it's got to have the perfect lens, the perfect camera. Um, you need to, you need a good script. You know, I mean that helps. But you know, even that, you know, if you're really just into making something stylized, you know, then just you know, push that narrative, you know, making you need, you need a good cool. story. And some of, some of your stuff, you know, just going through this, like you got some awards on some stuff you've helped work on. <coughs> and it, I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't it's know on my notes. Speak. It's on my notes. It's on Which your one? Web page. I don't remember now. Um, there's a narrative award for something. Oh well, so a losers got a uh, a film festival it award. It wasn't that one. It, there's another one in here. You're like her. She got gets photo awards, and she's like, I don't know. I don't know. Right? You know what? It doesn't mean that much. To me. It used to, but now it's like you what, mean, pay what means them. to me is when I show a bride the back of the camera and she starts to cry. That that's so better. Oh, uh, you're you're probably doing um all Adobe stuff like After Effects and Premiere. Yeah, what are you using? Uh. I actually now I don't use Adobe. Actually, I, yay! I, yeah, I haven't used Adobe. I used Adobe on a couple projects recently, but I mean it's because someone else started it in Adobe. Right. Yeah. Um. Too. But like, I I still love Vegas. For oh, thank you. Yay! Yeah. That's a weird, yeah. yeah. The new version Vegas. is fucking spectacular. Yeah. I use Vegas for editing, but I, I color correct and do my finalizing and, and DaVinci. 
Da Vinci um, stuff. I, there I, you go. I learned. I, I self-taught in Premiere. The new version of Vegas is a little bit better with the color stuff. It still needs work. It's weird and scary, and I can't it get it. It still needs work. <laughs> but, uh, I, I am so, like, I, I, I am all about Da Vinci when it comes to color. It's after having color corrected um, uh, Rocky Mountain Fast Guy and what I was able to pull out, like, I, I could see the difference between, you know, all the cameras and like, it, I was able Ooh, to like, really, I was really able to like massage it to where it was consistent or, you know, relatively consistent. Oh, so, so the we color have... matching through Da Vinci is, because I struggle with that as well. And it's nothing like Photoshop. It's nothing like a still photo uh the color yeah it, it's a little different for sure that's well you got at first it's node based so that she's a um, she's she's our color person because i can't i'm half colorblind but i still struggle with matching i do it all by and, hand but but you mentioning da vinci makes me wonder if there might be a better way to do yeah it. You know, we do we do a shoot and we could be using one two three four brands of camera we could use canon nikon, nikon sony, sony and, yes, and sonic yeah and we're not like, racist Ooh. yeah so what, what you should consider is like if you um if, if if you get into da vinci you know go straight into set it up for aces color space and then it can what color space Aces. Aces, like aces, like the card game aces. Yeah, ace of spades. Aces. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like, because like, Da Vinci has its own color space, which is which is fine, but um, aces is able to to accommodate mu a multitude of of color spaces. You know, i.e., color or different cameras uh, a little better than the Da Vinci uh, color space. Okay. And, um, that's interesting to know because like i said i'm eyeballing it and using most of curves in yeah Vegas. yeah and, and, and that what, can get what, it gets you yeah it gets you close enough for for what what, what we do yeah yeah but, well yeah and, and i pretty that's pretty much what i ended up having to do because like all the cameras that we're using there wasn't really a, a lot to correct it you know uh at least to get that first level of correction so yeah, I was eyeballing it because I had, you know, I mean, we shot with pretty cheap cameras. Yeah. The Rocky yeah. Mountain Fast Guy. I had a 60D, which is the just, Canon. Yeah, just uh it's not even as good as like a 7D. It's like that's it's pretty like, impressive what you got from it. That. Looks real I, we good. actually talked oh, about that. Yeah, yeah, that's very impressive. It was a 60D. Well, a lot of shots were also with the 5D Mark II. So that, uh, that's, that that's, that's a good nice. camera. We actually, yeah. we had a savings for the Mark IV, and uh, we are using it towards our new rental space because we just bought this dang uh, Sony because we need a second uh, camera. Which but, is dead but, right oh, now. man, I tell you, that Canon Mark is beautiful. I love it. And, you know, yeah. you know, when you rig that thing out, I saw some of the pictures. It looks just... He's all about looking nerdy. <laughs> well, the clients think we actually do something. Um, we're actually gonna put together a video of who can put the most ridiculous camera rig, rig together. together. Yeah, right. we should ask you to join us on that. I bet you can put together something pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. I just hit the I'm gonna oh, okay. that thing out of there. I don't know. I was gonna say something about Cigarette Girl, but um, that, I love that. By the way, I love that. Movie. I really Thanks. love the premise of Cigarette Girl, and I kept seeing the trailer, but I never knew how to get it. And then finally, you can figure out how to get it. So I own it, and we watched it recently. I could have sent it to you, dude. You just asked me. Well, you know what? I'm going to afford it. Don't you get money for that for, like, every copy bought or rented? I don't. Like, I already got paid for it. Well, so. shit, I would have just asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is. Um, yeah. Mostly Amazon, probably. Yeah. Um, Let's watch no, it. I don't even think you can get it on Amazon. I think no, you can. I just got it. You got I it. Just got oh, it. Like, yeah, like oh, okay. less than a month ago, and finally got to see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's uh, put on a. We should watch the trailer. Yeah. Set this up for us. Set up the trailer. See, this uh, is like, this is like <laughs> over a decade ago, right? Okay, so this is older. Uh, but yeah, the so, is brilliant. Yeah. So, yes. cigarette girl. Oh, God. I think that might have been two thousand eight. We shot that. We shot that in all of Memphis. Um, that yeah, was all SD. Two thousand nine. Yeah, so that was with 
Oh, yeah, so we probably shot, we probably shot it in 2007 then. Because it took probably a year for me to put the thing together. Because um, I, I think, I, I think I, yeah, I edited that. So you were um, cinematographer, editor? Yeah, yeah there, were, there was two of us, but I was kind of like the lead on that. So there's another guy, Jeremy, um, who was, uh, I, actually, I wasn't living in Memphis, but um, Jeremy lived there. And you did so color he, too, yeah. right? Yeah, I colored it. Uh, um, I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, the color was inspired from Fight Club. Someone sent me a bunch of films like the producer oh, that totally makes sense. take a look at this so he sent me some dvds bike club and i, I don't know what else but i like the, the idea of this greenish tinge to the at least for the cigarette world so that, that makes that. sense like yeah. yeah i would not have thought of that watching it yeah. but now that you right. say that like i totally see it now yeah um let's um again let's watch the trailer we're not gonna be able to hear it you'll probably hear it we know what happens when you take candy away from a baby. I'm the baby who loves candy. What are you? Some kind of vigilante? You ever heard of massive withdrawal? Well, you're looking at her. I'm the cigarette girl. Dr. Van Harvo, is this a class issue? When I was a teenager, it was an accepted part of the culture. Now it's become a liability and a privilege. You need to go home! I can't smoke at home! We all know that the living conditions in the smoking section of town have deteriorated over the years. Doc, I would not go into that part of town in the daylight, let alone at night. If you didn't smoke, you were on the outside. Now, you have to live on this side, the smoking section. There's rooms in the smoking section. Be careful. I sell smokes to people who live on the inside, slaves to a habit. You don't want an old lady that's going to die to have a loaded gun in her purse. Sometimes it takes forever to die. Did you find cigarette girl? Yeah, my chien, Lisa. Ah! <gasps> Our cigarette girl selling a product on the street. If this girl gets caught, it could be really bad for our operation. I should kill you right now! I wish I could drink enough to like you. Give up too much, too soon, and dangerous things can start to happen. <gasps> so there's more to this than just selling cigarettes. Well, well, well. If this girl were gone, would anyone care? Cold turkey. Let her go. The cigarette girl? Are you turning into some pistol packing mama now? What you doing with that gun? I ain't never heard about you killing nobody. <laughs> Cigarette girl. Let me help you with that. You better remember me. You have a problem. I had a problem. Now I kill people. You do it in anger. I do it in heels. Hang around here and pretty soon you'll be hanging. Take your dreams, turn them into smoke. And I could kill for a smoke. So. I haven't seen that in a while. That yeah, was, I was wondering trailer. how that is to revisit. Yes. Yeah, that trailer was someone, I think, at the... Someone else edited that trailer. There was a different trailer originally in that. I think when they got the DVD made, that, um, that trailer was specially made for that. I don't know. Again, I, it's, it's, that was out of my hands there. Now, that was like a very interesting premise. Um, yeah, I think it was a little. I mean, there's a lot of parts I like to it, but then there was a lot of, a lot of things that budget just really. It exposes the lack of budget in, in that film. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. What? What? Like what the do you whole mean? The, the whole the office of the cigarette, you know, where they all hang out. That that should have been. I don't know. It was just so ramshackled you know for being in such a big building it should have been like this huge space i never noticed so, that. Right, i that never ever noticed it. yeah what i thought was interesting about that is the story was good you had like a really strong female lead 
And it was also sexy, but it wasn't sexist. Right. Um, yeah, that was cool. I mean, right. you're, you're going to get your ass kicked by this woman. Um, yeah, kind of like a... Like a, um, a lot of movies been... that came out after 2009. <laughs> I mean... I mean the the strong female lead thing. I think that was happening a little bit later. It kind of seems like. Well, I, I, I was thinking like Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill Kill. You know, from the, <laughs> from the '60s. That's what its influence is more from. Yeah, yeah, kind of sees it in the in the visual style. So the uh, you uh, the visual style was very uh, was very specific, um, especially you know this apocalyptic smoking section of the town was. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just liked it. Um, I don't want to give away anything about it, but the cowboy thing at the end, I don't know. I just don't get the cowboy. I don't even know why he was there. I'm a little lost. Don't on ask that. me, man. I didn't write the story. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to watch it again. And I've only seen it once. I'm going to have to watch it again, but it was just the weirdest thing. And Well, the idea of the, the cowboy, from what, I, from what I understand, is, you know, it's it's sort of like taking the... the the macho Marlboro man um, archetype, I guess. And it totally so it, fit that too. So, so. Yeah. So that's what it, basically it's trying to be, you know, even though it's, it's, but it's also like the monkey on our back. So. Um, if you look through some stuff you've done, you've done some music videos and those are like, kind of like, you get a way more, um, you can be way more creative. You can do like you can do more effects kind of stuff. I mean, which do you prefer? Do it's like that more short form, like music video, where you get that creativity, or the more you know feature length movie kind of thing. I like, yeah, I I think I I do like doing music videos, but I think I like to do short narrative, um, like short films. Short, yeah, yeah, short film. Because the problem with with at least with a feature movie is is the commitment and, and you know there you, uh, you have to take you know almost like you almost have to go off to do shoot another project just to get reinvigorated along the way you know because you're yeah. you're, you're you're just doing the same thing over and over you know even though it's not always the same thing you know like color correcting you know you know, different scenes is, is exciting to me, but, you know, even the process, do, the act of doing color correction does get old Ugh. as well. So, <laughs> or, or anything really, editing Every, after well, a while. You didn't do this clip. Here, do this clip. <laughs> like, okay, this one needs yeah. to be. Yeah. have to do something over because you made some tiny mistake and it's a huge, awful well, just, oh, I hate that. Yeah, you know, just even with the little, the very first short film, uh, which I don't even know if that's true, but first film with some real equipment that I think right. you. You know, I'm like, okay, so I have all these great ideas. I want the sound to be like this. Yeah. And I want the ambiance yeah. to be like this. And I want, you know, every time post pandemic to like have this like blue green kind of medical look, but anything that we talk about before the pandemic is be real colorful. And I'm like, now I just want to shoot myself in the head. And that <laughs> might, that might be the whole, that might be the new film is just me trying to do this and then finishing it. That's, uh, you know, and then. Was it 2018? When? I don't know what you're asking. Me. When you came over and said, I've been doing photography for a while and you do video and you got all these weird little videos you keep yeah, making. Yeah, I started getting into video. Do and... you want to do this for business? And I said, no, I <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. No, this is my hobby. I will lose all. I won't have time to do my hobby if we start doing boring talking heads for money. Which we have. But it let us buy equipment to yeah. do to the do the fun, fun things, stuff. Yeah, yeah. However, exactly what I thought would happen is kind of happening. It's yeah, like, well, yeah. we don't have time to do We're that. We're too now. busy. Yeah. Do you run into that? Do you run into that? What do I do? I want to open Vegas when I'm yeah. not working now. No, yeah, I, don't. I know. It, it's like, and, and the problem with, uh, you know, working at your working at your home, at least for me, uh, is like the work's always there. So. Yeah, You're yeah. Always doing it. Yeah. I work tech for my home for yeah you know, since '97 till. When it we it started kinda over, sucks. I kind of envy it does suck. It does. It absolutely going in sucks. and just like being able to leave a job and then be done with it. I haven't done that. Like I had a couple houses since New Orleans. 
I had a couple so, houses working Orleans. for myself yeah. where I had a separate room, but I felt like I was always in that separate room. That was my separation of work and life. You know, I have a bedroom. Here's my work room. Here's the rest of the house. It kind of worked. It kind of didn't work. It's kind of worked that we have, you know, like a dedicated space. space. He, I think it's better for me. And the fact that he actually, still takes it home and does all the remote stuff. The, 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 We've been driving down the highway and he's been working remote on his phone. And the I'm fact like, what that are you doing? There's <laughs> just stuff we can't do. We have better computers here. We have, yeah, 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 yeah. That, all that, that camera helps me a lot here. that I can't really do anything. So you kind of have to come in and it sucks. And I bitch and moan about it, but at some points it's good because I don't wake up. I'm like, well, I have to do that, but I can't do it here. I guess I have to wait till whenever I want to um, kick the cord again. Yeah, one of my banker um, friends that's going through this, especially with the pandemic, says that I'm working from home and it kind of stinks because my work is always right there next to me, and I'll get up at three in the morning and do something, and I'm like, wow, yeah. that's you know, that you must do that. I, I know that I don't because I don't have the equipment at home, um, but but I know that you do. Hey, hope you enjoyed Buckwheat's story, and until next time. Yeah, um, we will have links. Um, we're going to put a link on the screen here, and we'll, if, if this is YouTube, if you've seen this on YouTube, we'll have the links in the description on how to watch some of the movies we talked about and saw some of the trailers for. So until next time, Yay. cheers. <laughs>